Hi there, I hope you're well. This week I've been turning some old IKEA shelving into some workshop storage boxes with some fancy birch ply fronts. So a little while back I made some plywood storage boxes for the router end of the workshop and I wanted something similar for the recent saw wall end and as part of the, of the general workshop makeover I found these old sort of IKEA shelves, I think they're Sten or Ivar, that I thought would make good salvage material for the box bodies. You're joining me part way into the project and I've already pulled the shelves apart and denailed all the staves. I've cleaned up the edges with the track saw, then butt jointed them together into planks with some dominoes in there for alignment. Both cabinets fit around electrical conduit, so I've measured the available depth for each box and worked to the shortest measurement so the boxes won't sit proud. It's easy to add a stop to make the box front sit flush, much harder to take a few millimetres off the back of the box. And I've done the same with the width and height, and then made a quick template for each cabinet as they're different widths, and checked that they fit snugly without binding. Now when it comes to the box fascias, they might be made out of scraps, but I want them to look interesting, but not distracting. And one thing I've wanted to do for a while is the same technique that I sort of found when I made my birch ply and wingy side table a couple of years ago. On that project, when I tapered the legs, I cut through the layers of ply so they were exposed on the face, looking a bit like tiger stripes or waves on a beach. I found an offcut of 25mm birch ply that I used when I made my bedside table project and I've cut it down so I can fit two box fronts on and have the plywood pattern continue across them. I want to end up with an 18mm thick front so I've marked 6mm in around two corners with an offcut. then drawn an angle down to the opposite edge and joined those lines together to give me a reference to work to. Now unfortunately I don't have a bandsaw capable of making a cut that deep and it wouldn't be safe to try and do this on a planer or a jointer. You could chock up one side on a backing board and feed that through a thicknesser but you'd have to make sure it was really secure. So I've decided just to use hand planes to plane down close to that line, trying to keep as flat as possible. And then I can hot glue that face of the ply onto an MDF backer board, feed this through the thicknesser, And with one side complete, I can pop it off the back of board and run it through again to flatten off the other side. So there you go, that's worked out pretty well. <laughs> a very clear step where you can see the, the snipe happening. Um, one of the slight concerns about doing anything like this where you're sort of exposing the inner layers of ply, ply always looks great on that face and on the good face, but when you expose the inners like this, you always get... Um, you always see stuff that you weren't necessarily meant to see, so there's knots and stuff in here. So we'll give that a quick clean up with a bit of sanding and we'll see how that goes and see what we end up with at the end of it. Mm -hmm. 
Now, another thing that I've wanted to try for a little while is some birch ply Mondrian inspired pieces. If you don't know Mondrian, I'll link him up down below. He's a Dutch post-impressionist painter, best known for abstract geometric blocks of primary colour separated by black lines. I thought these lent themselves particularly well compositionally to scraps of birch ply separated by end grain. I have lots of little scraps of birch ply and at today's prices you don't throw anything away and I've drawn out a rough grid of shapes to the right kind of size and spent a bit of quality time with the bandsaw then glued all the pieces together to make this kind of patchwork. I found it easier to glue them into blocks first and then glue the blocks together. And for the final pair of the draw fronts, I'm using what's left of the 25mm plywood offcut and cutting it down to 18mm thick staves. I've drawn up a vertical design that has the occasional break with a 25mm piece of stave running horizontally. And then I can glue them together to make that pattern. It reminds me a little bit of dead pixels that you used to see on computer screens and it breaks up the sameness of everything without making it look too busy. Oh, and I've put greaseproof paper or baking parchment down to help prevent the staves sticking to the backer. While the glue sets and all that, I've taken the clamps off the planks and run them through the thickness to clean up one of the faces. I'm not being fanatical about this, it's just to get a cleanish board as much as a flat one. Then I can use my templates to cut out all the components to size. I'm reducing the depth of the boxes by 6mm because I want to rebate the fronts like I did with the previous boxes. With the sides cut, I want to do the backs and bases next. And an easy way to measure this when you're using materials that aren't necessarily all the same thickness is to measure off the materials itself. I have the template butted up against a piece of scrap on the bench with the two sides so they also bear against it. Then I can offer up the back section so that it just touches the sides and make my mark. I use that mark to set the stop on the fence and make the cut. And it's always worth checking just to be sure you have it right before running through all the parts. A couple of the box bases had some other scrap wood added in and these need trimming back to size and then I can start assembling the boxes just with nails and glue. Top tip for a strong joint, it helps to have nails in the nailer. Who knew? The back fits on the base first and then the sides are added on.
Uh, back to the fascias, they're unclamped and ready to sand. With a Mondrian style one you need to be quite careful because you're also sanding the face of the plywood and you have less than a millimeter before you start burning through that. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. Uh, I'm sure I'll be doing more of these in future and I'll definitely be taking a bit more care with the construction when I do. The end grain fascia is much simpler to sand and the grease spoof paper comes off easily. So with the fascias cleaned up I need to get these cut to size. I've made a template for each cabinet as they were pulled out of square slightly when they were fitted to the wonky walls and I've marked up the fronts and cut them down. Each front will have a handle cut out top centre and I've used my previous template to mark this. Then roughly cut the shape out with the jigsaw. I used the bandsaw last time and the blade was just a little bit too wide for it to be honest. With the bulk of the cut removed I can make the final finish cut with a flush trim bit and a router. Because there's grain going in all directions here I'm glad that I let the template stops extend into the cut area as they help prevent tear out on the workpiece. And with all the handholds cut, I can just clean them up and soften the edges with a bit of abrasive. Now because the boxes aren't the best of materials and the cabinets are slightly skewy, I'm adding a bit of double sided tape to each box and centering the fascia. Pressing it onto the tape, then marking the inside of the box where the rebate needs to be, and repeating this with each box. Again, because of the grain direction going in all ways, I'm going to take the bulk of the rebate away with a track saw. So I've set the depth against a piece of scrap and made a quick test cut. And then I'm making repeat passes in the fascias and taking the waste out with the chisel. and then making the final cut in each fascia with a single pass of a rebating bit at the router bench. Mm. 
With the fascias rebated, it's a simple matter to add them to the boxes with nails and glue, and the 18 gauge brads coming in through the sides into the rebate keeps the fronts unmarked. I like a beeswax finish on birch ply, it wipes on easily with a soft cloth and brings up the grain lovely. and a little while later all we need to do is buff them up with a soft dry cloth. So yeah, fairly pleased with how they've turned out. Pretty happy with the results. You'd never guess they started off life as a set of IKEA shelves, would you? Uh, I'm particularly pleased with how the, how the fronts, how the faces came out, especially the Mondrian style. Um, I'll be doing more of that for sure. I've got a, a home study, home office sort of remodel later in the year, and I'll be trying that technique out for the, the drawer fronts and maybe the doors as well. Maybe try some a little bit of colour in there too. Uh, so I've got to be honest, less than impressed with the Tiger Stripe one. Um, and I guess I hadn't appreciated how much, how many imperfections it would uncover when you face plane like that. Maybe I just need to get a better grade of birch ply. Or maybe I just do need to do more of it and be more selective about the bits that you get to use. Uh, and again, the you know the end grain stuff is always good with the benefit of hindsight. I probably should have made that run horizontally because when because the cabinets had sort of pulled slightly skewy, um, I've had to cut them at a slight angle, and that would be less obvious if there were if the stripes were running sort of along instead of up and down but there you go we live and learn and again i think i said earlier the lessons we learn by doing these jobs in the workshop we can carry on to when it really counts in your own home or in other people's home for money uh, but i'll leave it there for this one thanks ever so much for taking a look it's been a bit of a long one i know um, there'll be no video next week maybe one the week after because of dentistry uh, but that's it for now. Uh, thanks ever so much to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members who've been fed little snippets of this job along the way. Uh, your contributions really do help me to keep the lights on here, so thank you so much for that. But that's it for this one. Thanks for taking a look, and I'll see you next time.